Thank you. I'll call us now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. So you will see that in this disposition, you have spirit that are two by two. Okay? You have the spirit of wisdom with the spirit of understanding. You have the spirit of counsel with the spirit of power. And you have the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of the fear of the Lord together. Both of them. Why? Because you cannot have one without the other. You cannot have one without the other. The fear, the fear of God is taught by the Holy Spirit. And we can read it in Psalm 34, 11. Uh, Ruth, can you read Psalm 40, uh, 34, 11? You can, it's on the screen, Ethan, for all of us to hear it again. Amen. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Yes, Amen. Amen. So it's the Holy Spirit who teach you the fear of God. Nobody else. Nobody. You can have the most religious church threatening you with hell and everything. Trust me, it may not get inside you. But when the Holy Spirit say, listen, this is the way you do things. It get into you, it get into your spirit. Now let's learn from how to get the fear of God directly, because we have an idea of what is the fear of God. Let's learn from Proverbs 2, 1 to 5. Go ahead, Ruti. Amen. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom, and applying your heart to understanding. Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Amen. Amen. He gives step by step how you get there. Let us review them one by one. Grace, can you go to slide two yes. or three? I don't know. Yeah. And if, so let's start with the first one. If, for receiving the fear of the Lord, if you receive my word and treasure my command, that is the first one. You cannot receive the fear of the Lord or uh, be taught of the fear of the Lord if you don't receive God's word, if you don't receive God's word, it's something with receiving the word inside you. Because many can hear, but few will listen. There's a difference. Ruti, you are in England. You are the one who speak the Oxford one. You are in Ireland there. Is there a difference between hearing and listening? No. You can hear something, but to listen, I think it requires your attention. Amen. You understand? Now, to receive the word, that means not only you listen, but now you receive it in your spirit. To accept the word, to accept what God is telling you, to accept what God is adding to you. And not only accept it, treasure it. Treasure it. It's very important. Receive God's words with respect. That is number one. With an attitude of submission and obedience. Receive it at the most valuable element of your life. Treasure it. The Hebrew word means to store something up in the secret place because it is of the most value to you. You can Amen. look at this verse. They seem so simple, but I'm telling you, this is where the difficulty is now at church. People don't receive the word. They don't accept it inside. They don't treasure the word inside because they want something fast, 
fast or they want to do their own thing. So when the word comes, they just look, they smile, but it doesn't get in. The beginning of the fear is, the, is wisdom. It's the beginning of wisdom. You have Amen. to receive the word with respect, with an attitude of submission and obedience. This is very important. Number two of the if, he said, so that you incline your ear to wisdom. When you receive your, the word, is where wisdom starts. And you apply your heart to understanding. So when someone is speaking to you and you really want to listen intently, you lean in. You know that intention. When you want to listen, you put your head like you want your ear really the word to get in. Even bow, bow your head that what it means to incline your ear. He said, incline your ear to wisdom. It also demonstrates a submissive attitude. You become what? Teachable. Teachable. That is the word why many are not teachable. They are just say, hey, I know it all. I have it all square up. I don't need to. But they don't understand that. The word is the one transforming you. And the fear of God comes with receiving his word in. Then he go higher. So first is to receive. Second is to lean and hear or incline your ear. Then third is what? As you listen, the word that you receive in start judging you. Start judging, separating inside. They said the entrance of your word bring light. We always say that, and we are so happy to say that. But we don't understand that actually it's like surgery. When the word go in, it has to separate what he found inside you. What is not from him and what is from the flesh and what is from God. Then what? Next step is you cry out for discernment. You cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. There's something that should happen when the word gets inside you. This indicates a heart committed to prayer, a passionate prayer. This doesn't mean making a public sin when you pray. In fact, a passion should Prayer between just you and God often can be more productive than public prayer. The word gets in and you can discover who you are through the word. I usually say the word reads you inside. You read the word from outside, but the word reads you inside who you are. So there's a cry out inside you for discernment and a lift up your voice for understanding because you have received the word. Now the word is confronting what is inside you. He said, then next, the next if is what? If you seek her, that is wisdom, as silver and search for her as for hidden treasure, God doesn't put everything out in the open. You know that. You know that when God wants you, to learn something, he put you slowly into a study. When you are studying, it's like you are discovering another part of you. So the more you search, the more you find treasure. The more you search, the more you find treasure. God doesn't put his jewel out on the pavement for anybody to pick up. He put them in place where you have to craft for them. This is how we need to approach wisdom. Search for it wherever it may be found. Then last step, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. What is telling you in summary? Let my word dwell in you. Let my word have a place in you. Let my word has 
be inside you. Then you will have the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Amen. Let's continue. Please. Now, the benefit of the fear of God. Ruthie, I will use you here a lot. Job Amen. 28, 28. And he said to the human race, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to shun if evil is understanding. Amen. He opposed to the fear of the Lord. That means you do everything with the fear of the Lord. He didn't say the fear of men. He said the fear of the Lord. He said it's wisdom. Now, to shun evil is understanding. Get away from everything evil. It's very important. It's very important. True wisdom is inseparable from the fear of the Lord. Many people think of wisdom as something intellectual. It doesn't matter how smart you are, how clever you are. Wisdom is not cleverness because cleverness can be compatible with evil. Einstein was very clever. Some doctors were very clever, but they claimed the atomic bomb. <laughs> some were very, I'm telling you, some were very clever. They created the, 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 the chamber of gas to, you know, to kill all of the, the Jewish at that time. Some are still clever. They try to put like a, a, how you say that, something under the skin. So they can screen you everywhere or they can have all data on you. That is the way to be clever, but is to do evil, to control people. It has nothing to do with wisdom. The fear of the Lord is incompatible with evil. Can you read for us Psalm 25, 12? Amen. Who then are those who fear the Lord? He will instruct them in the ways they should choose. Amen. One of the first benefits of the fear of God, first, he gives you wisdom. Number two, he instructs you the way you should choose. He gives you direction. When you have the fear of God, you will always know where to go next step. When you don't have the fear of God, you end up confused because you do stuff by yourself. At a certain time, Holy Spirit will back up. Is no more there. Is no more there. You try everything, it's no more there. The fear of God will help you have direction. He will instruct them in the way they should choose. This verse indicates that God doesn't teach everybody and God doesn't choose his student on the basis of examination. He chooses his student on the basis of character. What is your character? If you study character compared to anointing, you see that it's two different things. Amen. Someone can be very anointed but having a, the worst character in front of Christ, not having the character of Christ. Someone can have very good character, but God gave him an anointing that will not do all kind of miracle. You know, I always wonder why Jesus say, and let me throw that question, why Jesus said that John the Baptist was the greatest prophet can you hear one day, you have read your Bible, Ruti, and Grace, and all of us, Papa Shamu, have you heard anywhere that John the Baptist did a miracle? No. He has never done a miracle. He never opened the eyes of a blind or anything, resurrect people, nothing. But they tell you, he was the greatest. He was the greatest. A lot of things have to do with character. 
What Amen. is the character of the person in front of Christ? It's very important. So God chose his student on the basis of character. And he does not commit himself to teach those who have no fear of the Lord. And it's very important. Let's jump two verse after 25, 12. 25, 14, say what, Ruti? The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. Uh -huh. Amen. We go further. Not only he chooses you to teach you, but now he confides in you. That means he can tell you secret. I don't know if any one of you have heard the secret of God. Sometimes he can tell you on a nation. Sometimes he can tell you on this person. This is what I'm... You remember when he spoke to Abraham, he said, can I hide something from my son, from my friend? This is what I'm about to do to Sodom and Gomorrah. He was telling him a secret. Like, friend, you don't know. I'm preparing this. And then Abraham said, hey, please, I have family there. So don't kill all of them. How many people I need to show you that they are not part of that story? You understand? He confides in those who fear him. God told me once, I will not do something in your house without warning you. I was so perplexed. I was perplexed. Let me tell you the story because it's a testimony. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's a story where I am separate with my husband. Okay? Now we are back together. Thank God. I am separate with my husband. Go back one minute. Uh -huh. I'm separate with my husband. And he has another woman in his life. And the woman tried to get married. To, 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 not to get married to him because he's married. She's trying everything for him to stay with him. So she's trying to have a baby. Okay? This is more than six months for separation. Then... I am driving my car. Listen to this story very well. I'm driving my car. I have four children. I have three boys. I have one girl only. Okay? I'm driving my car. The Lord do open vision. I look in the back of my mirror. I look in the mirror. I see a brand new baby girl. Open vision. I don't say I'm sleeping. I see a brand new baby girl in pink appear on my mirror. I say, who has that baby? I come back home. I didn't understand. I come back home. I see like people bringing me a baby. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know who's doing the voice on the back. People bringing me a baby. I look at the baby. I say, this is not mine because I know my daughter is born like more than eight years ago. They, and they ask me, do you accept this baby? Suddenly I understand that this could be only a child that is, will happen in few, in few more for something. The lady is pregnant. And then the Holy Spirit, because I, I understand that the Holy Spirit said, I will not let anything happen in your house without you being aware of it. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Amen. He will confide in those who fear him. So from that point, he put on me the responsibility or to accept the baby or to refuse the baby. And because I didn't like the, the, the position, I said, I refused every Ishmael in Jesus' name. This is the way I answer to them. Any baby born out of marriage, I refuse in Jesus' name. And I stay quiet. Few days after, I confront my husband because he was, he was still talking. And he told me that exactly, the woman was pregnant, but they don't know 
what has happened, the baby is gone. Uh. Do you understand? The law confide in those who fear him. The law confide in those who fear him. And he act, he makes his covenant known to them. He makes his covenant known to them. The fear of the Lord will bring you to a higher place of intimacy. Amen. The Lord will make his covenant known to those who fear him. Let's go to more scripture. Ruti, Proverbs 10, 27. Proverbs 10, 27. The fear of the Lord adds length to life, but the years of the wicked are cut short. Amen. Amen. That is, you don't need to talk even. You know already that with the fear of the Lord, long life. Amen. Read Proverbs 19, 23. The fear of the Lord leads to life. Then one rests content, untouched by trouble. Do you understand? Amen. You want a peaceful, abundant life? That is a solution. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord in your action. Fear the Lord talking to, to people. Fear the Lord the way you behave so that you fear the Lord. It leads to life. That means it's put life in everything you do. It leads you to life only, nothing dead. And then you are content with the life you are living, untouched by trouble. Amen. Those are the benefits. Let's continue. Continue, please. Okay. Now, this is the last slide because I didn't do a long class, but I want us to pray. I want us to bless his shoulder. So this one will explain some of this first together. Okay. Uh, Ruti, Psalm 211. Amen. Serve the Lord with fear and celebrate his rule with trembling. Okay. Amen. Explain, explain to me this one. Serve the Lord with fear. That one we have learned. But how you can celebrate his rule with trembling. Ruti, try. Don't read what I. <laughs> Sorry. Amen. Sorry. Be, be a picture. Uh -huh. um, so celebrate his rule with trembling. Um, <laughs> Rev, I think it goes back to the first, the first if condition that okay. said that we have to receive the word and treasure it. Amen. Amen. So it's, it's a case of celebrating the rule and reign, the lordship of Jesus Christ over our lives with obedience and submission. Amen, amen. Who else can add something? Auntie Jennifer, Papa Shamu, who else can add something? Celebrating his rule with trembling. I mean, I think it's, I think it's, um, it's what you said because we cannot hear you, oh, it's me. Oh, can you hear me now? Uh, okay. You're very faint. No? Okay. Now? Yeah. Oh, I was just saying, I piggyback off what um, Minister Ruth was saying, because it is uh, celebrating his rule over, we have freedom in Christ. So it is celebrating that with him in the driving seat, we are able to to have a, a life filled with joy because we are being guided and instructed. We're yielding to him in every aspect. So it is a true freedom in Christ. A true freedom in Christ. Amen. 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 Who else want to add something? Mapo or Papa Shamu? Rejoice and trembling. Normally when you tremble, that means that you are afraid. But 
Yet he said, rejoice with trembling. Um, I think it's um, celebrating him with um, the fear that he's too old. And you must celebrate him with that reverence and uh, deep respect. Amen. It's true. Mm -hmm. It's true. With respect. With uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, we should celebrate him with reverence. Mm -hmm. Give him all the recognize all his power, all his mightiness, all his glory in everything we do in life, knowing that he's the master of the universe. He is the one whose whatever we have even, we need to celebrate and know that uh, he's the author and a finisher of everything in our life. Amen, amen. You see, what happened is, this, uh, uh, go ahead, go ahead. No, it takes me to Psalm 19. Uh-huh. Go ahead, Rev. Oh, sorry, I muted myself back. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So, in verse eighteen to um, uh, verse eight to nine, mm -hmm. when I see celebrate his role, his role here for me is his commandment. Mm -hmm. and rulership is expressed through his word. His role is his commandment. Is what he tells us. Mm -hmm. so it's uh, the statute of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. Mm -hmm. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Mm -hmm. The Lord is clean, enduring forever. Judgment of the Lord are true and righteous all together. Mm -hmm. So what I see here is the goodness that the, the word of God brings to us. Mm -hmm. And that we should, we should um, instead of seeing his commandment or his rule as a set of punishing uh, uh, you know, laws, rather, we should celebrate his rule. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We should celebrate his word. We should celebrate the fact that he gave us his presence. Amen. He gave us his, by his rule. So his rule is, is, is in his word. Mm -hmm. And his word, what brings joy to our heart. Amen. Amen. With him, the trembling part is um the respect mm -hmm. is the trembling is the respect it's the mm -hmm. honest of god mm -hmm. is that we should take him lightly we should not be so familiar with god exactly. we should always remember that god is still a ruler is still sovereign is still sitting on in a throne on a, on his throne mm -hmm. so yeah his word now that comes it's, it's like a king speaking Mm -hmm. Even if a king comes in front of you and say, um, happy birthday, or say something trivial, like, oh, uh, it's even a king cracks a joke, mm -hmm. you will laugh at the joke, but you're not going to think that because you're laughing at the joke of the king, mm -hmm. you are his equal. Mm -hmm. So that's what I wanted to add. Amen. Amen. It's exactly that, that don't forget who you are. And don't forget who he is. We celebrate with trembling. God is putting those two to explain the wisdom we should have in his personality. At the same time, you celebrate for all of the life, the joy, and everything is bringing to you. At the same time, you keep in your mind that you need to walk toward him toward your salvation. Salvation is not one time go, no. Because your work of every day will show your character. Your work of every day will show who you are. The fruit that you are giving will show who exactly you are. So you need to celebrate, but with trembling. Amen. Amen. So I say, do not forget through your victories that he is God and you are just a servant. Let's go to another one who's giving us the wisdom how to maintain that fear inside us. Ruthie, act 
9.31. This time is 9.5. Mm -hmm. So the church throughout Judea and Galilee and Samaria enjoyed peace without persecution, being built up in wisdom, virtue, and faith, and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort and encouragement of the Holy Spirit. It continued to grow in numbers. Amen. Amen. So you see all of these elements together also. They enjoyed peace. There was no persecution, but they were being built up. It was not just like, okay, this is like heaven. We just stay and we are cool. No. They were being built up in wisdom, in virtue and faith, telling testimony, receiving teaching, Receiving example, model, this is the way you behave. This is the way you do. This is the way you do. Being built up. But they were all walking in the fear of the Lord and in comfort and encouragement of the Holy Spirit. There was the fear of the Lord, but there was also the comfort of the Holy Spirit and encouragement. Continue walking, but stay in the fear of God. The fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, how they can go together. All I know is that God, from uh, is that from God's perspective, they do. They should never be separate. As a result, the people of the early church were edified and they multiplied. Hallelujah. Perhaps this is the key of church growth. Fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. At the same time, we have the Holy Spirit. At the same time, we need to keep the fear of the Lord. And you need to show in our action, in our love toward the others, in the way we share everything together. It's very important. Amen. Is very important. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So I want us to open up and see if we have a comment, if you have something you need to add, because this is a crucial lesson on the fear of God. You know, we speak more on the spirit of wisdom, on the spirit of might, on all of the gift of might and everything. Barely, 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 you will find a teaching on the fear of God. Yes. Mm -mm. Because nobody wants to hear about it. Everybody wants to hear about something great, what he did great. But when God corrects us, how many people share that? When God tells, hey, Paulette, I think this one you was wrong, just sit down and fix it. Because we are so powerful with what we did, we forget that you celebrate, but with trembling, with trembling. Hallelujah. So let me open the floor. If you have a comment, and if you want to add something to this lesson that you think we should learn. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's start with you, Ruth. <laughs> Amen, Reverend. Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to have the fear of the Lord in one area of your life and not in another area? I think everything goes together because you will not be safe. Huh? You will not mm -hmm. go to paradise and they say, okay, your, your, your left right your left leg can enter, but your right one brought you somewhere in the, you understand? Mm -hmm. You will not be mm -hmm. saved by parts. One sin, unfortunately, can make you condemn for the whole thing you have done. So if you don't have the fear of the Lord, I've seen people like, uh, they, will, they give money, they give their tithe, they give all of this, but they decide that, no, I cannot stay alone. Let me live with boyfriend. And I consider it's my husband, even if we didn't do anything that the world is asking. This is my husband. Guess what? It cancels everything you are doing. Mm. Because 
The fear of the Lord couldn't get you to respect the law. That is, you should not fornicate. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? Amen. Uh -huh. So you will not tell the person, oh, you're good to go. Since you are paying your time, since you are building different things, since you are doing this, you find no. Tell him the truth. Amen. Yes. We need to be spotless and eh? ready. Am I lying? We are trying every day with high Every five. day we are trying. Amen. Yes. So we need to. And sometimes you ask God, give me the strength to yield more in that domain because I'm letting the other things go, but this one I'm still retaining. Give me the strength. And you cry out to him. This is the step three. Cry out. And, and you will see, it gives you supernatural strength and you can break that yoke too. Amen. Amen. I have a question. Okay, go ahead. So, um, is it godly or ungodly if you are in an environment like let's say workplace environment because of the fear of uh, the law you won't be mingling too much with uh, the people in your workplace that you really know that they are ungodly, like they are, let's say, uh, you know, they, are, they belong to some occult and so on and so on. So my question is to know, can you just withdraw because you have the fear of the law or, but this is a people that you are working with every day. I think the Bible said that the Bible says separate from them. So I think that uh, when you go like at work or even at a, in the family or different, and you see that someone is very active in what he's doing, like occult, because two kingdoms are fighting, never lost that from your sight. Two kingdoms are fighting. The same way you are praying for soul to come to Christ, it's the same way they are praying for soul to come to go to the to the devil. Those two kingdoms are always fighting. There's no day where they take day off. There's always warfare. So you, when you know that you belong to God and you feel like you don't have strength, because it depends. Some have strength and they are on mission in order to convert people. The Lord said, go and talk to this person is the Lord who say, it's not you. They go and they wait the time until the person say, yes, I agree. I give my life to Christ. But other people, like you say, by contract, you are obliged to be with them. You are not able to go and start doing stuff together like nothing is happening they will all bring you into the realm who you are the one who can gain them to Christ. So I can say, yes, if you need withdrawal and you cannot fight them or receive instruction, you, cannot, you are not receiving instruction for them, I will say withdraw. And pray on everything that I gave in to you. It's not fear. Just pray. Amen. Even sharing food together. It's why I say pray on everything. Okay. Pray on it. Don't, don't take it for granted. Like, no, it's fine. I know this person for what. Pray for everything. I've heard the pastor today telling the story of a lady who followed him for five years. Five years, he changed job. She will be in the new place. Mm. Yeah, she has a mandate because they knew exactly who he will become in the kingdom. 
So they start following him. For five years, she was after him. Wow. Yeah. So don't play with that. Amen. Amen. I have a question, um, okay. Rev. Mm-hmm. The question I have is, um, you know, in the beginning, we, we, learned, we read the scripture where it's the Holy Spirit who leads us on how to have the fear of the Lord. Mm-hmm. And the question I had is, what is, well, is there a difference or what is the difference between you, the Holy Spirit teaching you the fear of the Lord mm-hmm. and the spirit of the fear of the Lord? Okay. The Holy Spirit teaching you one of his spirit. You remember we read Isaiah uh, 11, 1? Yes. And he mentioned different spirit. Different spirit of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So he can manifest like the fear of God. He can manifest like the spirit of mind, the spirit of counsel. Those are just the same. Okay. He's the one teaching you how that spirit manifests in your life. I give an example. I start following Christ, but it was still Paulette. When I have a paper, mm, I don't care. You know, I send, I trash the paper anywhere I live. Now the Holy Spirit get me more and more to listen to him. He start telling me, when you trash like that, who's supposed to pick it up? I come back, even if I'm driving, I will stop go and pick it up because he told me who is picking it up you get me Uh the fear of the law is gradual so more he will be more and more showing me sensitive stuff that i was not seeing before because i was not listening he showed me you spoke to a child okay why you spoke to him like that why you say something like that no you shouldn't say something You have to correct it. That is the Holy Spirit. You handle his matter with reverence, with fear. You don't do the way you want, and then you say, does say the Lord. No. No. Holy Spirit brings correction to your character. And it's the fear of the Lord. He brings the fear of the Lord inside. If you are there and you are not fearful of nobody and it's only you who rule, who rule, I'm sorry. There's no Holy Spirit there. It's your own ruling. Amen? Amen. So, so that means they're the same. They are the same. It's what okay. I say. Okay. They are the same. It's okay. him who's teaching. Amen. 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 Thank Another you. comment. We are learning from each other. Yeah, that's actually the conclusion that you made that um, it, it is the fear of the Lord, the spirit of the fear of the Lord that teaches about the fear of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Spirit of counsel, that counsel mm-hmm. in any manner. Mm-hmm. The peer, spirit of uh, power that empowers us to go confront anything that needs to be confronted with its power. Mm-hmm. So all of the seven ways is manifest, is to say, well, is him. Mm-hmm. who is teaching through these seven ways to equip us seven ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is, is, is showing me the, is the menorah, Reverend D. Yes, the menorah yeah. with the seven uh, candlesticks with the exactly. light. Exactly. He so said, each, uh-huh. mm-hmm. when each one has light, when each one of these spirit inside you has light, it's where there's complete light inside you. That's right. When you have wisdom, when you have knowledge, when you have, so each one has to be lighted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Each one has to be lighted. Each one has to start. You start perhaps with one and then you go to the next and then you go to the next and then you go to the next. And then after the whole light come inside you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The spirit of the Lord is part and all of these are the Holy Spirit. A part of the Holy Spirit. I wanted to address when you said, um, I think it's Ruf, Minister Ruf who said, can you, is there an area where you don't have a fear of the Lord? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. To me, 
if there's one area that you don't have the fear of the Lord, it means that you don't have the fear of the Lord in all of them. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot pick a part of God to say, you are my God in my finances and the rest, I don't need you. Either it's a God because a wholesome God or it's not the God. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, Amen. yeah, so it, um, it is because we are fallible. It's because we are um, human that are being made. That's why we are being and we are no human being. Like, <laughs> like been in the past, done. No, we are being, and that's, uh, uh, I think Reverend Fouquet will say that we are human being, being developed. Mm -hmm. So our whole life, all these seven candlesticks have to be lit. Mm -hmm. And it is us who have to light those candles, which means we have to come to him and say, Father, this area I cannot do on my own. Mm -hmm. This area, it's, it's, I, I don't know what's going on but this is what i want but this is not what's going on that will this is not what's happening so help me to be happening in your light you see any any anywhere i am i don't think that people you know accept me love me whatever that's rejection and all this tentacle help me deliver me from that Amen. Uh -huh. so it is us when you stand in front of the menorah you are the one to take the, the light and light up the oil. Mm -hmm. So lighting up the oil is to bring that dark place to God to say, here, I am weak. Uh, I, I don't even know where to start to be better, but I don't want that darkness. Mm -hmm. I want to be transformed. Once we say that to him, he does the rest. Amen. Amen. It's yielding. Amen. 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 Another uh, uh, comment, Minister Usha, you want to add something? I don't have the list of who is on the line now. This is why I'm just throwing the name like that. Hallelujah. You want um, where from, so it it, so it means that we can actually, uh, with the analogy of the candles being lit. Mm -hmm. um, so the more we yield, mm -hmm. it actually starts with the word. The more word we have, mm -hmm. the, more, the more commands of the Lord that we have to receive and treasure. Mm -hmm. Leading us, when the, and then the Holy Spirit uses that word to guide us and to lead us and to correct us. Amen. And it's obedience to that word mm -hmm. and that reading that we then grow in the fear of the Lord. I get it. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Yes. And Brother Eve was teaching yesterday on the seven uh, on the virgin and how the, the, the lack oil and all of this. You understand? You have mm -hmm. to see that lamp uh, always coming to light you have to see that the law is doing something. When they say, it's easy to say, because I've, I've uh, taught that a lot, the entrance of your word bring light, the entrance of it. But how much word you keep inside? Amen. The more word you have inside, I'm telling you, the more you will have humility. Yes. The more word, when you are offended, you don't feel it anymore. Why? Because it's, has nothing your personality is reduced to who christ is in you amen so you understand you don't feel yeah. it anymore you just feel like was that obedient did i do the right thing lord do i change anything it has nothing to do with what men give to you or remove from you and this is where we are going with the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is more important than the fear of men. The fear of the Lord is more important than uh, thinking, oh, what they think about me. And no, it has nothing. It's the fear of the Lord first. Is Christ agreeing with me? Is it with me? Is his presence there? Thank you, daddy. Thank you for being there. 
and you continue walking according to his direction. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Minister Usha, you don't want to add something? Mm -hmm. Okay. Father, thank you. Okay. She, she didn't open her mic. Okay. So is there any other question? Okay. You say? Yeah, I was thinking about that, but I was um, listening about a fear of the Lord. And one time God revealed to me that that's like a cleansing to us. Mm -hmm. We fear the Lord. And when the cleansing comes, we tremble like the Bible says, we tremble at his word. Amen. You know, his word is going to stop us from proceeding to do, go in our rebellious ways when we keep the fear of the Lord in front of our eyes. Yes. Amen. 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 So let's treasure this word today of the fear of the Lord and how to get more of him. Amen. Let's pray and let's open up that the Father give us direction to how to um, submit more also and how to receive more of his word inside. So let's pray. Let's open our mic and pray. Father God, we thank you for your grace and mercy to learn more, to learn one more word from you. Father, we are learning about the fear of the Lord. Father, we know that that fear of the Lord is the one guiding us to wisdom, to wisdom, to wisdom. Father, we want to be wise at your eyes, not wise at the eyes of men. Wise at your eyes, Father. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for grace. We thank you for mercy. We thank you for everything you are doing in our life. Holy Spirit, have your way. Spirit of the living God, have your way. Spirit of God, have your way. Spirit of grace, have your way. Spirit of wisdom, have your way. Spirit of the knowledge of God, have your way. Spirit of the fear of God, have your way in us. Have your way in us. Father, we want to hide your word like hidden treasure inside us. We want to celebrate yeah. your word and treasure your word, Father. Father, we want to be rejoicing with trembling, oh Lord, knowing that you are with us, your presence is with us, and your presence is mighty doing things around us. Father, we thank you, oh Lord, for everything you are doing. We thank you because you have time and season, and we can trust you that we always be victorious in those times, victorious in those season. Father, we thank you for everything we have learned. Father, let our light, oh Lord, come in front of the men. Let our light be on the city and bring light to the city. Father, be on the table and shine all over. Let all of us seven shake candles be lit in the name of Jesus. Father, you are the king of kings, the law of law. We surrender our will to you. We surrender our will to you. Father, we surrender our will to you. Holy Spirit. Ba 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 
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If there's no more comment, God bless you and have a wonderful Saturday. Amen. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.